Alex Jones, Freedom Fighter, how are you? Aloha, Mike Rivera from uh, the land of Lincoln here in the mainland. Um, I mentioned this, Alex, on your show last week, but I, I, I couldn't get to the full point of what I was trying to make. We all know about the bankers. We all have seen Follow the Republic and the Obama deception, knowing the cabinet. I've been exposing the New World Order to my roommates, and now they understand that TurboTax Geithner and the man of the year, Ben Bernanke, are the real uh, architects of this uh, global depression going on in this country. We have three months, April 15th. I want to get your thoughts on this. It's tax day. It's a Thursday. A march on Wall Street. We all protest. Peacefully, of course, like Gandhi and Martin Luther King have uh, done so well. And, you know, we expose the bankers to the entire country on tax day. And, you know, we have speeches, we have signs, you know, talking about what's really going on. And we can, ha- we can sign petitions, you know, posterize this all over the Internet since we don't have much time with net censorship and Yahoo selling off our searches to the government itself. What, what are your guys' thoughts? All right, I appreciate your call, day. Julio. And that, is, and that is basically what you said last week. I mean, uh, yeah, we need to get the Tea Parties to actually identify the bankers. Instead, the Tea Parties are all attacking Obama, who is the birdcage liner. I mean, he's bad, but once he was shot down politically as a messianic savior, he isn't as dangerous now. The military-industrial complex owned by the banks, that's what's dangerous that may stage a terror attack. Uh, but Mike Rivero, comment on what Julio said. Well, basically, uh, something that we're talking about over at my radio show and our website is there is a call for a four-day national strike uh, commencing on tax day and going through the weekend. And if we were to do that at the same time with the protests, I think it's going to carry far more impact than petitions. In a nation with massive national vote fraud, petitions don't carry any impact anymore. Yeah, I agree. Uh, We need need to have uh, a strike. Uh, on April 15th to all the new taxes and garbage saying no. We need people to go into all the cities where they're passing carbon taxes, even though it's all been proven to be a fraud and a lie and a robbery by the banks. And so don't just not go to work on April 15th. Go out everywhere and protest and demonstrate at the post office, at the state house, at Wall Street, uh, in front of uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, in front of Goldman Sachs. Great idea. Now, now listen, i got to move quick now to the calls. Jeff in Texas, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, Alex. I think I've identified one of the enemy's superstar destroyers, and this comes on the heels of your interview with George Hunt about the World Conservation Bank. Yes. Yeah, and I actually called Michael Rivera on this on Friday, but I have a follow-up. Uh, this is the Global Environment Facility. And it claims to be the largest funder of projects to improve the global environment. It's an independent financial organization, and it moves massive amounts of first world dollars. Yeah, all the big central banks kick into it and a few other holding companies, yes. Yeah, well, it's got members on its council that are actually sitting members of the Treasury Department. And I think you need to get somebody like a Paul Craig Roberts. or. Oh, yeah, Paulson gives something like 10% of his money to it. Well, we need, I, I think there's a lawsuit here. You can't have a sitting senior member of the Treasury Department also sitting on the board of a foreign bank. I agree with you. Uh, why don't you, and I'm aware of what you say, but I've never properly articulated it. I guess Hunt did. You need to write an article with the names and the facts and send it to writers at Infowars.com. And I am aware of that. We, we have covered it, but we need it in print. So, I mean, but this is all illegal. It's illegal to have Paulson give himself $210 million of the bailout money directly to himself. And Congressman Stern says, how'd you do that? D- who gave you a waiver to do that? And Paulson says, the Treasury Department gave me a waiver. He was the head of the Treasury. That'd be like if, 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 if I was a bank manager and I robbed the bank and I said, but I gave myself a waiver. I, I would be thrown into irons. Uh, anything else, Jeff? need to blow this thing wide open because if you look at their annual report and their stated history, you cannot tell who started this thing. Well, that's really the World Conservation Bank. Give people the name again. Yeah, it's thegef.org is the website, and it's the Global Environment Facility. Yep. All right. Appreciate your call. Uh, I mean, it's amazing, folks, what's going on. Again, the green tyranny is their way of taking over control of all facets of our lives. Tito in Canada, you're on the air. Hey, how are you guys doing? Good. Thanks for taking my call here. Just about to get head into the Olympics as a helicopter flies overhead. You know, just keeping everything safe. Anyways, I just I haven't heard you talk about the um, 
Slovak security uh, mistake earlier in the year, and it was maybe because I missed your show, but I wanted to know if you were aware about it and touched upon it on your show. Uh, refresh my memory. Well, earlier in the year, January 6th, I believe, um, as a security drill in a Slovak airport... Yeah, they, they mailed the... They, they, they put the bomb in the guy's luggage. They put the bomb not only in the guy's luggage, and he flew unwittingly to Ireland, to Dublin, but they once they realized that they didn't inform the Irish authorities for three days, and when they did, they initially tried to deny that they had any part of it, so this guy's no, like, yeah, yeah, we did cover that at the time, and that looks like a, bo a botched false flag. Mike Rivera. Yeah, absolutely. It, you know, every time we see this stuff being planted, what, what it is is all of this security infrastructure. We talk about the military-industrial complex. Well, the complexes are continually changing. And now there's the security media complex that hypes the terror threat so that the security companies can make money. But if they don't actually have a security threat every once in a while, people start saying, why are we spending all this money? Why are well, we here's a peril. Here's a parallel. I mean, there was a famous case, what, a decade ago in New York where the guy owned the only windshield repair shop in a wide area, and he was caught bashing out windshields at night with a ball-peen hammer that he would then fix in the morning at his local uh, office, uh, local repair shops. Uh, or it's well known that big virus, antivirus companies are funding putting out viruses. I mean, it, it, it's very, very simple. It's like the mafia threatening to burn down your grocery store if you don't buy protection from them. Yeah, it's it, it very, very, very similar. All right, appreciate uh, your call, Tito. Mark, Chris, Eddie, Daniel, Michael, and others. More with Mike Rivero straight ahead. And we've got a guest joining us from England where if you have a learning disability, a mild one, and try to have children, no questions asked, your children are taken by the state. Like you would take eggs from a hen. Hi, this is...